Hard to play games without a CPU? You've heard about Intel, but how much do you know about the company? Here's the top 10 Intel facts you probably didn't know. Number 10. The world's first microprocessor was not made by Intel. In fact, it was called the MP944 and it was used as a control chip for the swing wings and flight controls of the F-14 Tomcat Naval Interceptor. The chip was part of the Central Air Data Computer System that at the time was an extremely small computer. And in truth, we could probably talk about that computer specifically for a very long time. Military interceptor fighter jets are cool. Number 9. Back in the 90s, Intel and AMD chips could actually be put in the same computers. In fact, there was a standard called Socket 7 that quite a few different CPUs would fit into. Now, not every Intel CPU and every AMD CPU fit into it, but the Intel Pentium microprocessors did, and they were by far the most popular for a hot minute. Now, for the end user, a standard is obviously better on account if they want to get a different CPU from a different brand, suddenly they can. But as they figured out, for companies, it's better to use something proprietary because if somebody wants to replace something, they have to do it with a chip from the same company. Personally, I think standards are better because I care a little bit more about the consumer. But hey, that's the world we live in. Number 8. Intel gets all of its energy, 100% of it, from renewable sources. Let me emphasize, they don't get energy from anywhere else, at least in the United States. If you look at their EPA profile, that's the Environmental Protection Agency in case you're not here. Intel not only purchases more than 3.1 billion kilowatt hours a year of renewable energy certificates, meaning energy generated from wind, solar, geothermal, low impact hydro and biomass sources, but they also have 18 on-site solar plants at various U.S. Intel facilities. Now, I'm not going to get too political here on you, but that's good. If anyone really concludes that clean air is bad, I'd be confused. Number 7. In the year 2000, Intel actually predicted that we would have 10 gigahertz processors by the year 2011. Now, keep in mind it was a fairly informed decision on account of Moore's Law. Moore's Law, named for Gordon Moore, is, and I quote Wikipedia, the observation that over the history of computing hardware, the number of transistors in a dense integrated circuit has doubled approximately every two years. Well, for one, that doesn't happen anymore. We don't double the amount of transistors every two years. It's slowed a bit. Maybe you noticed. We've had three gigahertz processors for how long now? And that's, I mean, pretty average. In fact, because of unified architecture and GPUs, we don't even really care about how many gigahertz a processor is now. They don't even advertise it anymore. I'm sure if suddenly we had the ability to create 10 gigahertz processors, they would advertise it, but only for a short while because really the CPU doesn't have the kind of importance it used to. Number six, Intel actually allowed AMD to stay in business because if they weren't, Intel would basically be a monopoly. Now this is not the case today. AMD is a pretty well functioning company that frankly is sometimes a better value than an Intel processor, depending on what you're planning on doing. This is actually why Intel licensed AMD the x86 architecture because they didn't want to get broken up into a bunch of small companies. Whenever AMD started getting ahead, like in the mid-2000s, its market share got to just over 20%. Intel would turn up the heat. They'd market much harder. They'd coordinate a lot of their technology to release as a kind of landslide. And when AMD's share fell to 5%, Intel would just let up. If you ask Intel, they would say a bit, but frankly, to pulverize a company out of 15% of their market share takes a lot of work. And to not just crush them out of business would mean stopping that. Number five, you know how I said that Intel licensed the x86 architecture to AMD? They actually licensed their x64 architecture back to Intel because they could easily hold a monopoly in that field. Now what you have here is two good examples of why antitrust laws are necessary. If Intel was the only company allowed to use x86 architecture, all systems built on that would be using Intel chips. They'd have total control. And same with AMD and the x64 architecture. And if either company has total control, they only do things that are in their interest. Whereas as if there is competition between the two, in theory, they would want to appear better to the end user, whether it be their corporate clients or their consumer clients. Either way, they have to vie for your approval. And if antitrust laws didn't exist forcing these companies to compete for you, there's a pretty good chance that technological progress would slow down significantly. Number four, Brian Johnson of Intel is a huge fan of science fiction, and it actually inspires him to set the company's goals and plot out maps for the future, usually casting about 10 years ahead. His job title is actually Futurist, which is 
silly sounding, honestly, but considering he works intimately with many employees of the company to develop products based on his forecasting in order to remain, again, competitive, it's a pretty fitting title. Number three, do you know how Intel got its name? Well, Intel founders Bob Noyce and Gordon Moore wanted to name their new company more noise, but found out that was already trademarked by a hotel chain, which sounds like a very non-luxurious hotel chain because I associate both those names with like computer chips, not like breathtaking views and comfortable beds. So they sat down and they looked at themselves and they said, what do we do? Integrated electronics was a very good descriptor for that. They took out of integrated the INT and electronics the EL, creating INTEL Intel. I think you probably guessed that from what I was saying, but yeah, honestly, Intel is a much better name than More Noise, which sounds like Polly Shore saying something is better. It's More Noise, buddy. Number two, the I in the I3, I5, and I7 doesn't stand for anything. According to Intel, it's just a marketing brand name decision, much like iPhone. I can't imagine them just calling a processor by a number, though. That seems strange. Just doesn't get people to go, yeah, I want that one. People that are into weird stuff might argue over that, but normal, everyday people who are much more important to market to need stuff that they'll remember. I mean, we're bombarded with crap 24-7. We need stuff that sticks out. And I don't know why, but putting an eye in front of stuff just works. Need a vacuum? Eye vac. Need an iron? I flat. Need to do laundry? I wash. I don't know. It's just easy. I think they should call everything that. Although it, it might make everybody hate that more than they already do, which could be fun in its own little way. And finally, number one, this is probably one of the most technologically fascinating things I have ever heard. The transistor used on a third generation Intel i5 and i7 CPU is so small, you could literally take the width of a human hair and fit 4,000 of them into it. Over a hundred million of these transistors could fit onto the head of a pin. It just doesn't seem possible, to be completely honest with you. How do you even manufacture those? The answer to that question is exactly why they are a company company who is very successful, and I am a person who is recording a thing about how they are a company who is very successful. Now, if you happen to know anything else interesting about Intel, it'd be good discussion there in the comments. Also, let us know how much of this was new information for you. We always like to know exactly how good we're doing. If you would, please click the like button because it helps us immensely. And if you're not subscribed to Game Ranks, now is a great time to do so because we upload brand new videos every single day of the week, and the best way to see them first is a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching watching this video, and we will see you next time here on GameRanks.